this is great. We love it. And they really had intended just for Peter Jackson to do it out of the movie. But the movie wasn't done yet. So they said, let's just go with John. So I said, okay. But they said, we have to make sure Peter Jackson approves of every sound to represent the movie because it hasn't even come out yet. We have to they didn't even have the sounds created. So um, that's what, what happened. So we did went emails back to New Zealand between me and Peter, and uh, he made comments about my King Kong, maybe make it more alpha male um, sounding. So I made some tweaks to my thing, and I also did the dinosaurs, the V-Rexes, the Brontosauruses, the swamp uh, beast, the mutant insects, uh, all those things. And they all had to be approved by him. So <clears throat> that was pretty interesting. Um, I, I said, I asked him, I said, okay, well, can you send me the trailer or something and you know, get an idea what these things look like so I can make the sounds. They said, oh, no, sorry. This, <laughs> this, is, this is hush, hush. You, you, we can't release anything. I said, well, um, how about just some pictures? A picture of something? No. I said, just use that intuitive creative mind that you have, John, and just come up with all these different characters, the, the V-Rex, the Andero, the Brontosaurus, the Raptors. So that's what I did, is I created all those, all those sounds and uh, put it all together, and that's, that's what's ended up in all the merchandising that they did for it, for the film. So they had, you know, sound people working on the film uh, at that time, but nobody was any, anywhere close to being done. But this is a big multi-million project, multi-million dollar project as far as releasing all the games, the toys, the everything that went along with it, merchandising. Big multi-million. And they couldn't wait. So they said, well, Peter Jackson has to approve everything that, you know, you did to represent the movie. And he did. So. Cool. That's what happened. So I, I retained all the copyrights to all all the sounds. So I licensed Universal Pictures and their part, individual partners for different aspects of it. And then I retained that copyright and put out ringtones called Kong Tones that are still available. <clears throat> excuse me on uh, U.S. cellular. It was on all the major carriers back in 2005. Um, so it's still it's still out there. If you want to buy ringtones, you can buy all the all the ringtones, dinosaurs, King Kong, and everything out there. So again, as a as a it, entertainment <clears throat> a musician, you know, to to stay in the business, you have to be creative. And so this is what I did. You know, I made it all happen, and so it's got to be entertainment. <laughs> Well, I wish you the absolute best luck I can by saying I hope that your your sound effects become as famous and as well used as the Wilhelm scream, mm-hmm. because that's about as famous as you can get, I think, for uh, for sound effects goes. Because it's in absolutely everything. So, here's here's to you and and your future in the uh, the sound effects. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so. I- <laughs> As I said, I did it with the King Kong, and I've also done it for the World Wrestling Federation. Well, they came to me and they said, okay, we need the sound effect of uh, Triple H, one of the big guys, you know, throwing the rock into a vending machine. <laughs> oh, nice. So, you know, I take uh, my, my, my microphones out of the studio into the uh, alleyway. I got a big metal ladder, you know, set up the nice, beautiful microphone and threw this huge ladder in front of it. Scared everybody around there. <laughs> and then it recorded separate things with cans hitting, glass breaking, putting it all together to a totally unique, you know, unique sound that they needed for that application. So that's what I do. Wow. Now, as far as your sound effects go, um, a lot of them probably pretty, you know, if somebody wants a sound of something being hit or, or something like that, it's probably easy to go out and, well, I wouldn't say easy, but, you know, as far as in relation to other things, you find something that sounds like it, the same object being hit and you bang on it. Um, mm-hmm. What's the, what is the most creative thing that you have done to create a sound effect, like something that people wouldn't expect, like... It doesn't sound like what you used. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I've seen those, uh, uh, you know, even videos about that sort of thing. Mm. 
<clears throat> yeah, because right nowadays, I mean, when I started this back, you know, before even King Kong, um, you know, I was just a, a creative force kind of person. Nowadays, they have sound effects libraries. People buy those, mm. and, uh, you know, they can do things that way. But for King Kong, for example, um, when I when he's hitting his chest, I'm actually mm. punching into my black leather studio couch. No! <laughs> Throws into that leather couch, and you know, closely miking it, and then getting that. Uh, then the breaking bones uh, in some of the the things where the, he's crushing some of the natives. I, I've got some brittle sticks from the tree in the back backyard. I brought them in and crashed those. Uh, for the bats flying. The flapping sound is actually my leather guitar strap doubled over and pulled against itself to make the flapping wing sound. If you can, you know, if you could put the two pieces of leather side by side and then make a gap and then pull it tight, that flapping. So that was that. And then the crabs, let's see, the crabs, I think they have mutant crabs or something too. Seashells knocking against a piece of stone in a certain way and then it sounds just like crabs attacking <laughs> now see that's cool that's that's the kind of movie magic I, I like to be in on because i'm always reminded of some of the things that they did with star wars and how they would bend mm-hmm. certain sheets of metal and things like that to make some of the ship sounds and and things like that and it's just crazy how you can start with something that seems perfectly everyday and normal to us and when you hear it in the movie it sounds absolutely legendary mm-hmm. now for for the voice of king kong i did uh it's actually my voice but it's multi-tracked slowed down i would do it low already and just kind of anticipate things and, you know, experiment around until I get that thing. But sometimes there's a few layers of voice on top of each other to get that. Hmm. But it's it's just my voice. Sometimes people take an animal sound like a dolphin or elephant and then do that. But everything's just my voice. And that's the same thing with the dinosaurs, too. They're all my voice. Same thing. You just pitch them up, do them slow, use your, you know, internal... <laughs> You know, things like that. <laughs> you, you can raise it up slower, down, do things with that. But, you know, so I didn't use any other animals or anything like that. Just just try to come up with something unique. And also, I didn't try to listen to, uh, like, Jurassic Park or any other movies. I didn't want to be influenced to all those types of movies. I said, no, 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 I'm just going to just use whatever I can, just comes to mind. Just experiment around and come up with some things, so... It was pretty cool that way. But they do tend to use, try to use animal sounds now and do things with those. But, but if you just spend some time, you can really come up with some unique things that you could never get. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, so anyway, I had fun. that's pretty amazing. Now, I might have covered this already, but how did you get involved in doing sound effects? Uh, well, that's, again, through this, my musical, uh, entertainment lifestyle. That first, uh, let's see, well, it, it's kind of a, I don't want to tell you the whole story, but, uh, I was looking for music because I was also acting as a music publisher for the Commitments movie with, uh, MCA, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And I went to, uh, a musician and a group called the Hollywood Heroes up in Hollywood. So I was getting some music from him, signing up his uh, contract for that. And he was doing a TV show, TV pilot. And he said, hey, Johnny, you're sharp, man. Do you want to be the co-producer of this? So I got involved with him. So we started working up in the Hollywood area, just on Santa Monica Boulevard up there, at, a, at a, one of the studios, and making this pilot. That, that was great, and I did that for actually, let's say, a, a year, something like that. Then he took me to a friend of his, he's, who was in Cannes Film Festival at that time, and he said, hey, Johnny, you're pretty sharp, why don't you work with me, and we'll make feature films, and you'll be uh, one of the producers on them. Okay, great. 
So I, I jumped on that train, and then we started getting in the film business. And that's a whole giant story, which, you know, maybe we can talk about later, but <laughs> ended up doing a co-production in Russia, the Ukraine. I hired all the cast and the crew, sent everybody over there. It took a couple of years, a big, a big progress. I left that whole business. I said, I'm going back to my music studio and work there. And one of the film people came down and said, listen... We need to make a video for one of my clients that has a toy. So I said, okay, sure. I made a video for him, and he said, hey, can you do this? He said, we have a sound of Steve, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's saying something, but we don't want him to say that exactly. Hmm. We want him to say something else because we're pitching this to Jack Specific in Malibu. Uh, the master license holder for World Wrestling Federation. I said, okay, let me have a go at it. And sure enough, I was able to take Steve Austin's voice, flip it around to be exactly what they wanted. They took it, they got the job, and bang, I was in the I was in the toy business, the sound effects, the sound voiceovers, everything. And that's it. I said we didn't plan it. And then as soon as I did a couple things, then then there was Mattel got me in and I actually worked with Mattel. I did 23 CD-ROMs with them, recording voices, sound effects, uh, being the director for all their products, Barbie, you know, Barbie, uh, Barbie Genie, Barbie this, Barbie Goes Riding. And those are big productions. These are big, big giant things for Mattel. So we'd have my studio filled with Oh, sometimes nine people, like five executives and voice talent just coming in. They have several characters that need to come in, and we'd have to capture the sounds and then put sound effects with it and, uh, you know, create their whole production, and then they'd make their CD-ROM games. So, anyway, I, I guess I did it well. Yeah, yeah. sounds like it. Yeah, yeah okay. so I did, did a lot of that. Yeah. Okay, so if we're going to work converse, any more conversation, we're going to take a small break. Before I do, and play one of your songs. Okay, and, there you go. Music. Yeah, yeah music. I like it. And that'll so, be like the topic it. when we come back, too. So yes. We'll get you get you prepared and in the mood for it. That's right. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, so one we have to play is Break the Ice. So tell us about Break the Ice. Okay. Go ahead and tell us about it, um, about the song individually. Um, I don't think I made myself look super clear with that. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that'll be for when we go on the break. So what, what's, uh, what's the deal with Break the Ice? So, so are, we're off the air now. They're listening to the song? Or? Oh, no, 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 no. We're still on. We're, this is how we're going to introduce the song. We're going to have you give us a few words about it. And then once we come back, we'll get more in depth about your, your career. Sure, so yeah. let's talk about the song real quick for just a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, this song is called Break the Ice. And, uh, you know, it's one of my songs, Johnny Reed. I'm playing actually all the instruments on it. That's the same on all my CDs, albums. I play all the instruments, do all the singing, all the writing, all everything. So uh, it's, you know, a great creative outlet for me. Mm-hmm. And this is about... It's a little bit more of a rock song. Um, talking about breaking the ice and... Uh, Walking into a room and, you know, pe- people won't let you in. They're, they're judging you for what, what they want you to be, but maybe not what you are. And uh, you just got to break through that and right. keep on going. Cool. All right, guys. Here is Johnny Reed and Break the Ice. Mm-hmm. 